You, What's up, guys? We are live! <laughs> Robbie is super uncomfortable. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? We are back with Beastly Thoughts Live. I am really ready to go. I'm on a, like a caffeine slash sugar slash sleep deprivation high, and I am pumped. Are you pumped, <laughs> Robbie? Are you pumped? Tell me you're pumped. I'm friggin' pumped, too, you man. Pumped. Oh, yeah. You better get pumped. <laughs> Woo! What's going on, Beastly? You pumped? I'm feeling great, man. I had a crazy week, but I'm feeling fucking fantastic. (laughs) (laughs) WWE. What are we playing this week, man? What are we doing? What are you guys doing? Uh, Who wants to go first? I've been playing a hell of a lot of The Last of Us, believe it or not. I uh. All right. After I what's next? (laughs) (laughs) Get out of here! Get out of this game. Respect. (laughs) I actually, guys, uh, I want to give a shout out to some of the guys I've been playing with. I met. Quite a few new uh, Last of Us players. Shout out to Junior and some of the other guys. That community is great. The game is awesome. And uh, I did a two-hour live stream last night and met so many great people and played with so many great people and uh, had had a really good time doing it. And uh, other than that, uh, I'm about playing on Bloodborne uh, Game Plus, New Game Plus, and it's very, very difficult. And that's what I've been playing. When I, you start uh, New start Game Plus on, on Bloodborne, uh, do you continue with your character fully leveled up? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it's still mm-hmm. really difficult. So I started in uh, at level 105. It is pretty difficult still. What what level are is your character at this this particular moment, Briar? 14. Okay. Yeah, you got a little bit know. to go. I don't know what level he is. <laughs> I got a yeah, way. But my character is my character is uh, level 105, and uh, it took about two hours to beat the first boss. So on game plus mode. Wow. And that's after I knew what he'd done. Yeah, very, very high difficulty. New high attacks, level. like new, new... No, it's just he's much stronger, moves faster, everything seems to be more aggressive. That sounds awful. I don't know if I'm going to go... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know go if I'm going to go that. all the way through the game again. Uh, Kate's kind of ushering me towards Dragon Age Inquisition. She started playing that this morning, showed me her character, it looked insane. I was like, wow, you can put that much into the character creation alone? Uh, and she said the first, it took her about an hour just to get to the intro scene. Mm-hmm. Basically, all that was a precursor to the opening thematic. So I was like, wow, it must be pretty nice. She tells me to stop fucking around and get on that with her. So uh, nice. I might be trying it out this week. It's kind of perfect timing for that, right? There's not any big releases. Well, Mortal Kombat X came out. Yeah. So. And and I, I want to say something about that, too. My cousin, Adam. Hey, Adam. Uh, he just sent me a text from Ohio, and he asked me um, what I thought about it, and I hadn't played it. I didn't buy it. And he, we come from the age of Mortal Kombat. Briar, you know exactly what I mean. Oh, hell yeah. And we were all young. Mortal Kombat was the biggest thing on Earth. Everybody played every game. We, all, we knew all the fatalities and played it. And I it had to explain to him that now things have kind of changed a little bit because the people I grew up playing with are no longer around, and you play mostly online. And so you got to find people who have the same or similar skill sets or similar gaming wants. And to me, I'd rather play something like a Bloodborne or a Destiny or a Call of Duty or something like that uh, than play a Mortal Kombat all over again with random people I don't know. To me, I get more out of knowing the person and playing them than just playing random people personally. And one more game I've been playing this week. I put four hours, four or five hours into Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Mm -hmm. uh, Believe it or not. And Kate and I played it and God, we, we had a fucking great time. Uh, I know normally I'd say I don't, and the game is blah, 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 but we had a blast. You played playing multiplayer? It. Uh, yeah, we played. She played on her PS4, I played on mine, and we played, I think it was Friday night when I got home. We played from 6 until about 11 o'clock p.m. straight on Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. She went through a bottle of wine, and I went through about four bottles of water, but we had a great fucking time. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and it was the first time she drank all that wine, and she actually got better. Normally, she gets a lot worse, but good time <laughs> it, it's worth it. A lot of people still like that game, and I'm gonna put them in the same place I was last year. A lot of people hated on Ghosts. I was having a great time. Uh, I'm hating on Advanced Warfare this year, but a lot of people are loving it. So to each their own. It's not the game for me, but you know, that's absolutely. incredibly respectable for you to say that, Brad. That no, really I'm lying through my teeth, really. Robbie, what have you been no. playing? <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so I've been... You guys didn't... Did, Dave, did you get a chance to pick up Mortal Kombat X this week? No, I didn't. I actually do want to pick it up, uh, mainly just for the single player, though. I'm not real interested in getting in. I've heard the online isn't that good anyway, so... I'm okay, yeah, so um, I think it was... The day after it came out, I've got it on Xbox One. I've played, I think, halfway through the campaign, roughly, maybe a little more than that. I've played some multiplayer with some friends and a lot of that. And i got to say, I'm really, really loving this game. Like, I am not a big fighting game fan. The only fighting game I really have ever attached myself to is Mortal Kombat in the past. But I absolutely love this game. I mean, the fatalities have been ramped up to 11 here. They are gruesome as hell. You rip somebody's guts out of their stomach or you chop their head off and you slice their body in half. Blood is flying everywhere. Like, it is one of the most gory games I've ever seen. And it is it is magnificent to pull off one of those finishers. It is really amazing. I'm having a blast with the game. So they're offering... You can buy... Like easy fatalities. Have you seen that? Yeah, yeah, that's actually in our notes as part of the news is oh, okay. um, we'll the easy fatalities. So you can buy five of these easy fatalities, I believe, for a dollar and thirty for five dollars because usually you'd have to go like down, left, right, up, X or something like that to do a fatality. But you, if you buy the easy fatalities, you make it so you hold the right trigger and hit like the Y button. So it makes it far easier. But this just sounds like desperation to me. Like, to have to do this to make enough money for your game, you have to do this to make the money back? That's uh, well, let, really scary. Let me chime in here. As a person who played extensive Mortal Kombat 1, Mortal Kombat 2, Mortal Kombat 3, if you ask me for telling me from any one of those games, I'll tell you how to do it right now. Wow. Top of my head. Uh, that's how much Mortal Kombat I played. And if you think about Liu Kang's fatality in Mortal Kombat 3, you hold block, you hit up, down, up, up, and then you hit run and block at the same time, to drop an arcade on somebody, that the average gamer is not going to want to do that and then do his other battalion, which is four four down down circle. It's much easier for the casual gamer. The casual gamer probably will get get familiar with one character's skill set and might not want to go the extra mile of learning all the fatality. And that might actually be good for a lot of gamers. I know growing up playing a lot of people, they had no idea how to do certain fatalities, and this might actually be beneficial to some people. I do see this as kind of a good thing, not necessarily really bad, because the game is already going to sell phenomenally. I don't think they're really uh, reaching. Not I think on PC. This is actually it's... something. <laughs> Say what? Not on PC, it's not. Oh, okay. <laughs> the game yeah, not. completely yeah, it's... broken on PC. It doesn't even work. Yeah. Uh, but I think that the uh, easy fatalities, especially for that price, that price range, I think it's a pretty decent value for the really? people who have issues you remembering. A value? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, for five dollars you get to perform a fatality thirty times. No, no, you is that how it works? Yeah. There is it 30, 30, 30 fatalities. No, you get to perform a easy fatality thirty times. It literally makes the fatalities for your character easier. They make the less button presses, so you have to do a fatality. Yeah, like, once that's you what buy it is. this, this once you buy this DLC, is it, do you have the DLC forever? Do you have to no, re-up that character? No, it's not DLC. Character? It's yeah. a microtransaction to just buy. Like an easy mode for fatalities. You don't get. Yeah, new but once you use those five, do you have to buy them again for the same character? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's totally out. Nope. That's, that's insane. I thought that once you bought it, you have to <laughs> That's what we're explaining no, to you. No. It really is crazy. It's not yeah. what you think. Like, it's literally. It makes it so you have to press less buttons to perform the same fatality, and they're charging you for that. That is wow. insane to me. That's insane. Wow. That, yeah, that is totally insane. And a way to continually get more money out of the consumer. That's but bullshit. at the same time, you don't have to buy thing. it to get new... Co- like, there's no real reason. if you, you could choose to just learn how to do the fatalities, and there's no real game. Yeah, it's difference. totally it's optional. Making you know. you do it. <clears throat> it's a weird it's thing. Ridiculous. It's just It seems awfully expensive yeah. for what they're giving you. Anyhow, so you're yeah. liking Mortal Kombat. Yeah, I'm really loving the game a lot. I mean, the fighting feels good. It just feels even more refined than Mortal Kombat 9 was. I think it's a phenomenal fighting game. And I'm just really, really enjoying it. It's so fast-paced. Like I said, those fatalities are amazing. And this is so much fun playing with friends. Like, on Friday night, I had a couple buddies over. We were playing it for, like, five straight hours. It was so much fun. I absolutely had a blast with it. it I enjoy fighting games more with couch multiplayer. When I got, yeah. When I can get my ass kicked on the screen and then... Return the favor in real life, that is the perfect fighting game experience to me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. What else you got, Robbie? Um, that's really all I've been... Oh, no, I've been playing GTA somewhat again. I've been playing GTA Online with a couple friends. That's been about it, though. Mostly Mortal Kombat and uh, some Grand Theft Auto. All right. 
I've been playing Destiny, which I've talked about plenty. No. Ago. I'm not going to keep going with it. No way. Um, Ori in the Blind Forest. I still have not finished that game. I really want to get through it. Um, but time. You know, so I really want to get through that one. Uh, but that's really all I've been playing this week. So I'm just going to move it along to news because there is a ton of news this week. And I think it's actually pretty big news. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So should we start off with the Destiny stuff? I think so. Yeah, it's at the top of the list, I think, for a reason. All right. So let's start off with what Bungie came out and told us what's going to be in House of Wolves, the new DLC. This is is notable not only because it's been a long time since we've got DLC for Destiny, but also because it's the last DLC that people kind of prepaid for with the limited edition versions of Destiny. So this is like the the last kind of free DLC that people are getting. Right, with the season pass. Mm -hmm. So, they're going to have this Prison of Elders content, which is going to be like an arena, which we don't really know a lot about. People are predicting it's going to be some sort of a horde mode, which frankly does sound interesting, but it is going to be a three-man fire team, not a six-man fire team like a raid would be. There's not going to be a raid, which is disappointing to 90% of the internet. (laughs) <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, uh, we're gonna get obviously new new missions, uh, strikes, uh, some new Here. content for multiplayer, some new uh, le- multiplayer levels. Uh, and of course, there's gonna be new exotics, new legendaries, and all that stuff. But the real th- big deal here, I think, is a people are excited to hear that there's gonna be this Prison of Elders thing, but really disappointed to find out there's not gonna be a new raid. Beastly, what do you think? Do you think that the raid got cut out of this content because it wasn't ready? Do you think that they never intended That's, to put a raid in here? I honestly have to... I, I watched your video, and you open up a lot of chambers in my mind and my brain ample time to speculate on this. I do honestly believe that they were working on, on a raid for House of Wolves and it wasn't, avail- it wasn't ready in time. If you look at the raids they've created up to this point, especially the very first one, they put a lot of effort into that. Yeah. They put a lot of effort into these raids, uh, the, the creation of them, the things you have to do. Uh, it's just so intuitive. And I, I think that it does take a lot of time for you to continue to create something on that level. Uh, but on the other side of it, I think that before we had a raid in Destiny, people were still pretty happy, you know, happy with the game. And then a raid was introduced, and that gave people a whole new way to play the game. They could have something just as new as a raid, but it won't be a raid, and people can still enjoy it. So I still got my fingers crossed. I'm getting the DLC the day it comes out. I'm just hoping that they find a way to kind of lessen that blow and that it doesn't just completely let people down. I, I would personally prefer if they did have a new raid because I enjoyed... The only time I've ever done raids is with you guys. Mm-hmm. You know? uh, and, and they've always been well, extremely one of the only fun. ones strong enough to shoulder your burden. Yeah, you're damn right. You're damn right. <laughs> Uh, and every time I've done it, I've had a ball doing it. And uh, I was looking forward to it. Everybody was looking forward to a new raid and, you know, getting some new shit and new raid gear. But unfortunately, that's not the case. But they will, like they said, uh, have a new raid before the end of the year. So that's another thing to look forward to. Yeah, well, will that – are they talking about a raid that, like, ties in with House of Wolves? Or are they talking about a raid that ties in with, like – that Comet expansion. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I would think it's going to be Comet, probably, and the thing that frustrates me is if they're going to charge separately for this raid, because originally, from what we know, there was going to be a raid in House of Wolves, but they had to pull it, because when you look at the description of what the content that was going to be there, there was going to be a raid, and there was going to be these three story missions and all these maps and stuff, and it's really disappointing to know at one point there was going to be that raid, and they had to take it out, and we might just have to pay more for this Comet expansion just to get the next raid, which really stinks. What if they just they just found out it wasn't ready, right? They they weren't going to be ready, and they knew that they had to get more content out there because it's been, you know, let's assume that the new content was supposed to come out in March, right? That's when everybody thought it was going to come out, and it got delayed because the raid wasn't ready. Eventually, they had to make an, a decision. Like, look, we had problems with the Dark Below raid. We had to push it out so fast that it ended up being a much shorter experience. People weren't happy with it. People think uh, the Vault of Glass is a much better raid. So let's push House of Wolves until that raid is ready. And then they, later they realized, okay, 
the raid is going to need even more time. It's not going to be ready till midsummer. So let's release House of Wolves, and then when the raid is ready in the middle of summer, we'll release it then, and then we'll get Comet mm-hmm. with possibly a new raid too. I don't know. That's all basically just conjecture and theory. I, I don't know if it's at all what well, happened. Well, tr- it'd be cool if we got a raid in the middle middle of summer. Yeah, but if they just release a new raid to go with House of Wolves, how would they uh, how would they charge for that if it's a part of House of Wolves? What if it was just free? Well, that would be great. Like if you if you owned House of Wolves, it would just be like immediately you know, you get it. free free install. Yeah, yeah, it'd be a free update. Be it would be like part of the content included. Yeah, they do. It just would come much much later when it's finally done. I don't know though. I mean, mm-hmm. I know that there's a raid that at one point was in development and going into House of Wolves. I'm positive of it because of the leaked information. Why it was not... Why it's not coming with House of Wolves, I can't tell you. Prison of Elders does sound interesting to me, but since it's not six-man content, like, it doesn't really replace a raid for me. I'm really looking forward to it, don't be wrong, but I think it's it's justifiable to be pissed off there's no raid, but still super excited that Prison of Elders is coming. You know, I think Because that raid is okay. like its but, own special experience, too. Like, there's nothing else like that raid out there. To not have it, a lot of people are disappointed, because everybody has these six-man teams. They were ready to go in with House of Wolves. They're like, yes, we're going to do this raid. We're going to get all this new gear. I'm ready. And then as soon as they announce that there's no raid, it's like, well, what are we going to do? Okay. So... I want to leave the raid behind, and I want to talk about speculation about Prison of Elders. Have you guys played the Horde mode in Gears of War? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I, I always liked that content. I thought that was really cool, and Halo kind of stole that, I think, for Halo 3, and made it, it was like firefight mode. I can't remember what they called it, but it was basically essentially the Horde mode inside Halo, and it was fun as hell. Do you think that that is... Like, enough content to kind of get us through summer with Destiny? Like, if you were a Destiny player, like, is that the kind of thing that's going to keep you coming back? Or is that the kind of thing that you're going to play through once or twice and then kind of move on to the next thing? It's really Mm. hard to say because we haven't seen what the content is, right? Like, we don't know the extent of what this activity is going to be like how long is it going to be is it just going to be you cu- fight a couple waves of enemies or some like big boss at the end that's it like how long is this going to be first of all how much content is there and how rewarding is it like do I want to go back and play it over and over and over again like the raid do I want to keep mm-hmm. getting this new gear we don't know so yeah I mean it's all speculation at this point I was talking to my raid team the other day and we were talking about like how would they give out rewards in a horde mode like if you got to level 10 did you do you automatically get a chance at a raid piece, you know, like an armor piece? And if you get to level fifteen, do you automatically get a chance at a you know a secondary weapon and like so on? As you climb the ladder of different like waves of enemies, do you get a better and better chance at better and better gear until finally, you know, you get to like that last piece, and if you beat that last thing, then you get like the exotic or something. But of course they could do so much because Prison of Elders, like the lore around the Prison of Elders inside Destiny, you know, there could be anything. You know, you could be fighting Cabal, you could be fighting uh, Fallen, you could be fighting any type of enemy in Destiny. So they could really go kind of balls out. And if they kind of randomized it so you never know what the next wave is going to bring, that could be really cool. And if they did like Nightfall-style skulls and modifiers, Mm. like it could be almost a surprise every time you get in there. And they talked about replayability, how it's going to be you know, really focused on replayability, and a little bit of randomization would add a lot of replayability. Yeah, definitely I think replayability is the most important thing going in to make this content last, to make people enjoy Destiny and keep playing it until Comet comes out. Like, this this Prison of Elders has, like, a lot of pressure on its shoulders to be a really big event that people go back into over and over again, and how long is it going to last? I don't know. But, yeah. Well, this is, the, this is the, the make it or break it moment for Destiny, because... Uh, when when House of Wolves comes out, if this content is not up to par with what people are expecting or what people want, people are going to be apprehensive about buying the next DLC. Yeah, if and this happens, is like the last one they get for free. Yeah, Absolutely. If it happens, you know, the install base, the, the players are going to drop dramatically. So let's just hope that House of Wolves does, uh, you know, have some really engaging content. Yeah, well, I'm you, looking forward we're to, it. to go to the reef. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's true. Nice. Mm-hmm. Spend a little time with too. the uh, queen over there. Maybe cozy up. Yeah, I want to ask uh, you something about this. White Brian. hair. What kind <laughs> of cozy <laughs> up are you what? talking about here? What? <laughs> what? I'm a married man, Robbie. It's <laughs> <laughs> good to know. It's good to know. <laughs> What's the name of your clan, Briar? The Skitty. Uh, I, I'm sorry. The the Milky Sirloins. Oh, because I remember a long time ago, a guy who looked just like you invited me to his clan. And, uh, uh, yeah. Now mm-hmm. I think I'm like the only one left in that clan. BRC. Wasn't that a clan yeah. one day? I thought that was. Yeah, I, uh, I it's think still it still a clan. exists. It's still a clan. In spirit. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm the only one left. I. Uh, I just didn't do very. He didn't tell me he was. He didn't tell me he was leaving <laughs> his own clan. He just said, "Fuck DC. He's looking." Hold it down for himself. I didn't even no. say it. It just. <laughs> <laughs> you know, mine that said that. Gone. <laughs> right, you're the only one who said that. No one else. Uh, yeah. So now I gotta find a clan. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the other big news, I think, Robbie, why don't you introduce this? Oh, I did want to talk. Uh, no, go ahead. Let's talk about the next big news. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> the uh, battlefield stuff. Did you guys see that trailer? You no. mean Battlefront. Battlefront, sorry. Oh, yeah. I was to say, new Battlefield already? You, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I've seen Battlefront, uh, and that was all in-engine, uh, I guess, in-engine footage. That looks spectacular. Uh, uh, it does, but it's scary, Briar, because the game, even though it looks great, it's an online game. It's going to be like Destiny, right? Uh, you get all these... Well, yeah? I don't it know has, about that. It has... I'm talking about online. Well, it has online and offline and it has offline co-op as well, but um, there's no story mode. There's yeah. no campaign. I think that's no campaign to it. And, and it's a Star Wars game. It has to have some type of campaign, you know, for people to get behind and really want to flesh out. Graphically, it looks phenomenal. Uh, the character models, the speed of the little hover bikes is just like the movie, and I can't even imagine trying to control that. It's just so fast. I get scared when I'm doing 65 on the expressway in Atlanta. So it looks so fast and so scary, but it looks it looks great. You know, uh, Darth Vader's in it. <laughs> Don't know how that's going to work. Uh, that had to be PC that. footage, right? I I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, that had to be PC. There is no way either of these consoles could run it. I'm sure they'll get close to that. There's no way that was PS4, or Xbox One footage. There's well, that's, no way. you got to take into uh, into account. It's a vertical slice. It's, it's not even the actual game. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just something that's that they true. created to show. So, I mean, anything could run that. It's not like it has it has to completely re-render everything. It's just something they created just as, as a showpiece. But it does. It looks really good. Um, and I'm excited for it. I'm, you know, cautiously optimistic because it looks so good. Uh, and, you know, we got all these people excited about it. All these Battlefront fans. You know, I'm a Battlefront fan back from the PSP days, you know. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it, but... That one thing that, that was revealed, that it doesn't have a campaign, yeah, that's kinda, a real bummer. it hit me as a shock because they always have a great campaign. It always has lots and lots of uh, you know details and, and, and story development in the Battlefront games. And for this to not have one, I'm, I'm wondering what they're going to do. Will they have like Titanfall-type story clips that pop up as you progress? We'll have you know, to see. Through, but it does. It looks phenomenal. I mean, yeah. Robbie, it, this it, is a dice game, though. So it's going to launch broken and stay broken for like eight months, right? <laughs> well, hopefully not, but that's probably going to happen. Let's be honest here. Um, I think the worst part about it is not having a campaign. Like, the, obviously, that really makes me think about Titanfall and how that game didn't have as long a legs as everybody hoped. Hopefully, this game doesn't go that same direction. I mean, hopefully, the multiplayer, there's Did enough Did Titanfall there. not have long legs because it didn't have a campaign, though? I think it didn't have long legs because it didn't have enough content. It yeah, be, and the multiplayer, yeah, that's true. Because obviously with a game like that, you're going to want your multiplayer community to stay active, give them enough carrot on the stick to keep going, right? And yeah. that's definitely the main issue with that game. But I there think it's like two good guns in that game. And and you take into account, you know, after a year after the game came out, they gave away all the content for free. That was smart. You know? Yeah, yeah that was it, smart. It made you want to play it, you know? Yeah. But um, if you think about the past, the recent past, games that have been released without any kind of story or campaign mode have a negative connotation. Even games like Destiny still have a phenomenal following. The big criticism of that game is it has no story, right? Or not enough story. Titanfall, the same way. There's really no campaign. or nothing. You, there's no characters you really care about. And if you don't really care about a character or, or who you are in a game, it makes you care less about the game. 
Yeah, I yeah. think people do care about that stuff, but in Destiny, there's not enough of it, right? Like, people obviously want more of it. They're intrigued by the world that Bungie has yeah. created. You know, like, the reason that people want so much more story is because what's there is so intriguing. It's just really unfortunate that they didn't put enough of it in there, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm still, I mean, you're absolutely right, bro. I mean, I remember how I felt the first time I played campaign at Destiny, and I was, every time a new character was introduced, I was like, wow, I was looking at him. There's something about this person or this character that I really want to know about. Mm-hmm. First time I saw the queen and her brother, I was like, this is going to be fucking awesome. And that was the last time I saw him. I was like, what, what the hell? I mean, yeah. you Did want you see more. the trailer for, for House of Wolves? No, I haven't seen oh, it. Oh, man, you got to check that out. It's a good trailer. Wow, really? Oh, okay. It's very yeah, cool. I was playing The Last of Us. But, yeah. Uh, we'll see what happens with Star Wars. Uh, hopefully, Battlefront 3 is uh, an amazing game. You know, th- th- There's a lot of games that have come out recently that have kind of fallen to the wayside You know, with the campaign you know, not being in the game. So, hopefully, that they have enough content to keep people engrossed in the experience because it looks great. It looks like Star Wars 100%, you know? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm totally. Say, I'm not buying that day one though. I, I mean, Dice and EA have burned me too many times. There's no way I'm buying that game day one. Yeah, same here. I really am cautiously optimistic about it. Just how it's going to launch. I'm sure the game is going to be fantastic, but how it launches, we'll have to see. Yeah, I like, I, and I'm not gonna. I don't care what the reviews say. I remember reading reviews for Battlefield Four, and like you know, it's getting nine out of ten, and the game does not fucking work. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> How did they miss they that? Yeah. Before they check the online. They, well, a lot of these um, online video game re- reviewers, they get the game early, so the servers aren't available because the game is given to them before the release date. So they can only review it on single player, and that's what they do, and it really screws people over, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. So continue on, continue on with this news. So I actually saw this, and I was pretty... Uh, I was pretty excited when I saw it. This Guitar Hero Live has been announced. Have you guys seen this yet? Yes. Yeah. I saw this, and I don't know why I felt like I was watching a Sega CD game or something. Yeah, when the games, with When the first games uh, that were FMV came out, full motion video, and I was like, wow, this is a, this is the evolution of that, uh, where you're, it's, you're on the polar opposite side of what the old Guitar Hero games were. Now you are in a first-person mode of the actual guitar man on stage with your band, looking out into the audience, getting people hyped and excited. You're getting cues from your bandmates if you're screwing up or if you're doing good. They'll look at you and say, hey, man, you're fucking up. Mm-hmm. Or you look out into the audience and you see people rage and going crazy, and if you screw up, they look at you like you're retarded. And, <laughs> and so I think that, that aspect of it, I don't know how they'll keep it fresh. That's what Kate and I were talking about, how they'll keep that fresh. When because you play Guitar something. Hero, though, how much time do you actually spend looking at the visuals? Well, I guess to each his own. I, but I like, especially like a full motion video experience, I'll try to scrutinize everything, especially if I'm in the audience and I'm not playing. I'll be looking at everybody. Yeah, and if you're the, not the one playing, then you'll be looking at that stuff. But when you're actually playing, like, I, I don't know, I'm laser focused on that little fret coming down with all the buttons yeah, trying to hit them. with me. Yeah, yeah and, and, I, I hardly even know what they're doing behind there. And <laughs> another thing with the guitar, they changed the way that you actually play it. There's six buttons. Which is interesting, I thought. And it looks really, really good. It, yeah. it looks like a great puzzle type of experience. And uh, I actually watched Tim Gatty, Tim Gettys play it on Kind of Funny, and um, they had a blast with it. I'm thinking I might give this game a try because who in the hell plays Guitar Hero alone? I'm going to play it and have 20 people behind me. And sometimes I'll be in the audience too. But if I start to notice things in the atmosphere happening over and over again, that kills the replayability. I, hopefully they had take after take after take after take, at least seven or eight takes of each song so you can see different yeah. people with different things. Because if you have the game for two weeks and you know exactly who's going to do what each time, it kind of takes you out of the experience. I want to still feel like it's fresh. And that's the only downfall to full motion video games. There's only so many takes you can do. You know, it's it's a little bit easier when when it's computer generated graphics to make things look a little bit different. But when it's actual people, but what about the game, fact that? Sorry, go ahead, Brett. No, now I'm intrigued. What about the fact of what? 
Oh, sorry. Sorry. Um, I just wanted to bring in the fact that, um, because I don't know if you guys know this, it's only guitar in that game. Did you know that? Like, they're mm-hmm. not doing drums, they're not doing vocals, it's just guitar. Yep. Yeah. They're, they're, they're banking on it. Uh, hopefully, it's Guitar Hero was enough. a lot of fun. You know, playing those games, especially as you got better at them and you, you kept moving on the difficulty scale, like, they got insane. And now with this new guitar having... Basically two buttons per fret. Unfortunately, it's only three buttons. I wish there was like five. I think that would be a lot cooler. Uh, you know, they can get a lot of fun. I'm not going to buy this game because I've kind of had enough of that genre. I'm not, you know, I played a lot of Rock Band back in the day, and it was a lot of fun, uh, but I'm just kind of done with that genre. And to kind of scale back, back to like plain old Guitar Hero, it doesn't really excite me. Yeah, they are doing something pretty crazy here. Like, I'll give them credit for really trying to do something, like, really cool and different, especially compared to Rock Band 4, which is, like, more of the same, kind of continuing on from where Rock Band 3 and stuff left off. Like, they're doing the same thing, basically, whereas Guitar Hero is doing something completely different. Mm -hmm. They're ditching all the other instruments. They're only going guitar, and they're going through this live-action thing. But the thing I don't feel like it's that different. It's a new guitar, but that just means you got to buy new hardware. What, what's this guitar bringing that you couldn't have done on the old hardware? Well, yeah, one thing I think they're doing different is they're really making you, or it, it appears to be, they're trying to make you feel like a real rock star. From the from the moment the game starts and you're actually ready to go, you're backstage. You're backstage with your band. Yeah. You're walking past people. You know, hot chicks are winking at you, and and you know, <laughs> people are getting out of your way, and you know, and people are telling you to do a good job when you get on stage. All this shit's happening. And it feels like a real experience. And by the time the, the, the camera actually gets to the stage, you look out there and it's like you see thousands of people. And if you got a giant TV, you're going to feel like you're on stage because you're looking at what looks like a sea of people and you feel like they're all there for you. So It could I be cool that, or it could be completely cheesy. Yeah, it, it could be a gimmick. And, of course, I think it will be a gimmick ultimately. These games never last. It's just like a toned-down version of the Wii, but... I think that experience will be fun for people who've never experienced that, you know, introverts, people who don't have socialized. So to play a game like that and you see all these people, you feel like they're there for you, and you you want to give them the show that they came to see, or totally fuck up. It's up to you. If you had to buy either the new version of Rock Band or the new version of Guitar Hero, which one would you go with, Robbie? Ooh, they both. I feel like they both serve different purposes, like. It almost feels like it would be worth getting both because they're almost going in different directions, but I feel like maybe Rock Band just because rock I can band. play with other people because there's going to yep. be more instruments. I feel like Rock Band, probably. You, you well, agree, I, too? I, I totally think? agree. If, if yeah. you could... Come on, think about it. Me, you, Not Too Nerdy, 95 Gamers, all of us, Robbie, playing some damn instruments together. Forming a band Popping together? Up. Yeah, man. Going on Hell world yeah. tours. All right, so who's the drummer? Me. I'm from Africa. Come on. Right. <laughs> Hands down, i got to be the vocalist. My <laughs> vocals are just beautiful. So. I can't now, see for the dime, so... <laughs> can, you guys, yeah, yeah, the guitar, then. can you guys imagine the catastrophe that would be if they tried to have Rock Band, the new generation, online somehow? Like, if you oh. got a guitar and your friend has drums, if they were to somehow... That could work. Why wouldn't that work? Actually, it'd be cool with Kinect, because you could actually use the camera, or the PlayStation camera... Uh, to see your friends, you know, and like, you know, they could kind of green screen them into the game. Yeah, you and you guys would all be together. together. That'd be cool. Yeah, but, but the, the input lag, though, would be the issue. Well, know, everybody would be playing their own, their own scales, right? So as far as you know, you're only Oh, yeah, you're side. absolutely right. Yeah, you're playing your instrument, and yeah. with their playing theirs, I guess the net would be able to, or the net code would be able to compensate and sync them up properly. Wow, that might that, that would be actually pretty damn pretty damn sweet. Imagine well, that. The only, nice. the only part that would be hard to do would be the vocals, right? Because the vocals would have to come through real time. <laughs> wow, well, you can let Robbie sing. He's Canadian. Oh, oh, um, I don't know what to think of that. Okay, I don't know. It's not gonna work because Robbie's in a different time zone, so his his vocals are always gonna be like three hours different. <laughs> 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 I don't think that's how it works, but people <laughs> just come in three hours later. Like, <laughs> what is that for the people oh, who right, are watching? Right, <laughs> for the people oh who are God. watching, Robbie, he actually recorded his segment of the show three hours ago, and it's just now getting to. Yeah, we're just uh, pre-playing it. This Good is night, Robbie. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, guys. My bedtime. Yeah. Um, 
Who know? Well, they haven't shown a rock band, though, have they? No, that hasn't been revealed. Just what announced? No, yeah, but they did say that you'll be able to import all your old music if you were a rock band fan and you bought music. You'd be able to import it into the next one, which Guitar Hero you won't be able to do. Yeah. Well, Guitar Hero, I don't know because I'm not really big on rock. I mean, you know, I play some rock songs, but not a lot. You know, it goes against my nature, I guess. Mostly but, pop, like uh, Britney Spears, and yeah, sometimes I run. Anyway. Um, <laughs> What what I, what I'm thinking is this Guitar Hero. I don't know if they're using um, licensed music or if this is all original stuff. It's going to be licensed because music, but the bands are not like the actual cover, band. Cover band. band. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm thinking for people, especially like gamers on on the internet who like to play their games and post their games on YouTube, this is going to be a major issue. You know, and, and of course you can't just come up with, you know, hot tunes. For a game and people really play them and enjoy them, unless you know people really recognize them. So I'm thinking that this game will not be on YouTube. Probably not. I did watch some old Guitar Hero videos on YouTube, like people doing like the crazy extreme mode stuff. Oh yeah. Like fingers moving faster than light, that kind of thing. <laughs> it was always like a 12 year old kid because they're the only people that can move their fingers that goddamn fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those reflexes. Prepubescent. Yeah, they they they're used to it. <laughs> Oh my. oh my goodness! Well, All right, that's enough about Guitar Hero. Well, what about DDR, man? They need to bring back Dance Dance Revolution. <laughs> that's what they need to fucking bring no. back. No, come on, Konami, that's bring it back, right there. <laughs> I still love my DDR Max, man. I play it every you now still and then. Have it? Yeah, I still have it. I got two. Why Max. is that not on your YouTube video channel? <laughs> I don't make know. that happen. <laughs> <laughs> All that music is licensed too, man. I have to change. That's it. true, right? Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. I thought about yeah. it. Kate was going to do it, and uh, I told her no. All the music is licensed, and I don't want to get any strikes against me. Yeah, you. you but it would look good. It if you didn't monetize it. Yeah. All right. So, what do we got next, guys? Bloodborne sales Ooh. pass one million. That's pretty good. Yeah, I, and I think it's going to continue. Uh, the game is amazing. Briar, I didn't hear you mention that. Did you get a chance to play any Bloodborne in the last seven days? No, I have not. I'd are, like are to. You think, you think you're done? Time. What's that? Oh, you're going to when you get some time? Okay. Yeah, I, you know, it's a game, in my opinion, it's kind of a game that I like to sit down for like a block of time with, you know, more than an hour. And, uh, yeah. you know, sometimes weeks don't give you Flip that. Flip her over, feel her out, yeah. see how she fits. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's what he said last week. <laughs> oh, my God. So, yeah, Bloodborne sells one million copies. Did you um, say blood porn? Blood porn. I thought I heard porn. that. <laughs> yeah. one blood Bloodborne's uh, past one million. Sorry, which was it? I think Bloodborne will... By the end of the year, I think it'll be probably Sony's most successful exclusive on the PS4, if not already. That, what? It's, no, what? Are you crazy? No, what are you th- what are you thinking? I don't know, but like we have n- we're we're in May. We're yeah, I'm sorry, we're in April. The end of the year. Yeah. The end of- what else do they got? Uncharted's not coming. The oh, only other exclusives we had on PS4 have sucked. Maybe they have honest. some secret coming from E3. Maybe Horizon, which would be amazing. I don't know. Who knows? We shall see. What uh what is No Man's Sky? That might yeah. be good. Yeah, where the hell is that coming out? No man knows. 26, probably. No man knows. It'll come once the last three. Once they figure knows. out how to make that a game. Yeah. <laughs> like, we got the tech. It's and we got ideas what we can actually do with it. <laughs> it's coming out as soon as we figure out how to make this a game, guys. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know when, but someday. <laughs> it comes with a strip of LSD. So that, <laughs> I think that the tech is so good that they ha- they don't even care that it's not really a game. Because it's just so amazing. Yeah. I mean, that's one of those games that you can just bring your friends over and say, hey, check this shit out. I'm going to spawn here, and I'm going to go forever. And we'll go go out and see a movie. We'll come back, and I'll still be Take going. Take a hit off of this, and then check this shit out. <laughs> yeah. Tote that big boy. Wow. Yeah, it's a, you know, it's definitely cool, but I, I can't imagine sticking with it for any amount of time because, it's like, what do you do? What do you do with that game? But see, that's the thing. We don't know. And yeah. it's like when Destiny was first announced, nobody really knew what the game was about. We knew it was a shooter, but nobody knew what it was about, what the story was. This game could end up being a, uh, an adventure game, a first-person adventure game. It could be a shooter-slash-space-exploration game. 
going to planets and, and mining. And I'm, I'm talking about mining in more fun ways than they did in Mass Effect 2. Um, it, it could be a ton of stuff. You know, it, it's really up to your imagination. Your game could be totally different from somebody else's. What if they allow you to be like a space pirate and go and, you know, assault other ships or planets and steal, you know, uh, stuff from other gamers online? I mean, it could be anything. It's just so much possibility because of the tech. Yeah, I'm hoping but we have so. no idea what it is. That's the problem. Yeah, they're just like us right now. They're having a podcast with them right now, and they're like, what are we doing with this game? Like, I don't know, but the tech is awesome. <laughs> I don't know, but look at it, man. It looks awesome. <laughs> it's oh, sick. Oh, the tech. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is bad news, guys. 2K Australia, the developer behind Borderlands, the pre-sequel, is officially shutting down. Robbie, why don't you talk about this a little bit? Yeah, so uh, this makes me pretty bummed out because I uh, picked up the Handsome Collection recently on Xbox One, played through the pre-sequel, really, really enjoyed that game, and considering it was 2K Australia's first Borderlands, they did such a good job with it, and it really sucks. Like, that that really gets me down, just having played that game and seeing the potential, what they could have done for another Borderlands if they did it on their own or whatever they did next. It's definitely sad. It sucks. Now, did they speak on why the, the uh, developer is actually shutting its doors, or do you think it's because of the sales of the game? The game just didn't make enough money. It was successful, but not enough, I guess. I, I think that sucks. 2K considered a, a bit of a failure, considering how popular Borderlands, Borderlands 2 were. Um, the pre-sequel just was not that well-received. Yeah. To be a video game developer has to be one of the scariest things ever. It's like, imagine working it in a five-star restaurant, and you serve a fantastic tartare with a filet mignon. And then the manager comes back and says, table six didn't like your shit. Get out. And you lose your job. Oh. But the next, the next meal could have been fucking fantastic, right? It's just so scary. It's such a gamble to be in, a, in that situation. Anybody who's losing their jobs, you know, I, I got prayers for you. That's, that's a really rough thing to go through. Yeah, it really shows that development costs in games are just going up and up and up, and that's why, going back to Mortal Kombat, that's why they're doing this whole microtransaction thing, because it's so hard to make money now. Game costs are going, are just skyrocketing, that they need other methods to make money off games other than just the core game itself. Like, they have to make money back on micro microtransactions and DLC, and if that's what they got to do, I guess they just got to do it. Do you think that we're just we need to get past the fact that games need to be more expensive than sixty dollars at this point? No, they probably do. So, mm -hmm. and I feel like there would be less DLC and less microtransactions if they were more expensive too. I bet uh, you anything. I don't know. To make their money back is bad. Like if we, if we just accepted that games are going to start costing eighty dollars, like we, it wouldn't be there wouldn't be so much pressure to sell so many copies. And have all this DLC in the games or yeah. microtransactions. Well, I don't know, and maybe I'm just too practical. To me, a Blu-ray costs a certain amount of money, and all you're doing is burning the same game. You've already spent your money creating the game, and you need to recoup that cost. And and so the consumer doesn't understand that. All they know is what they've been paying. It's like gas. If the government came out and said that gas needs to go to a standard, the five dollars per gallon, because we need to recoup some costs. People wouldn't understand. They'd say, hell fucking no. You know, they're not used to that. If yeah, last... I mean, look at all the work that has to go into a video game these days. It just wasn't there. In the We're playing the same prices that we played in the PlayStation 2 era, right? The games in the PlayStation 2 era were $60. They're still $60. How much more effort does it take to make a PlayStation 4 game than a PlayStation 2 game? I mean, well, the, the, every, every art asset in the game has to be much higher resolution. Uh, every game needs to have multiplayer now. You know, like, Apparently. This I mean, is, this it, is a it's thing. been that way, though. Back when VHSs were out, they were $20. Back when DVDs were out, they were $20. Yeah, but it now, doesn't intrinsically take more effort to make a movie than it took in the 80s. You're just talking about when you buy a VHS or a Blu-ray or a, or a, you know, whatever, or a, a digital download of a movie, you're not paying for that disc. You're paying for the license to play it. You're, you're paying for... The people who made it, yeah, but right. So you're you, still, it, it's kind of it's similar because you're still paying the same amount of money. But the difference is it doesn't, it doesn't take more to make a movie now than it did back then. But it definitely takes more to make a video game now than it did back then. Let's just say Jaws Part One when it came out on VHS, it was twenty bucks. Yeah, Avatar cost 
untold millions, one of the most expensive movies in the world to make. Yeah. Came out to DVD or Blu-ray, it was still 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. That's just the consumer consensus. People are used to paying that. We have IMDb list of movies that cost, Waterworld, cost tons and tons of money. They could have said, this movie costs us so much money, we've got to charge everybody an extra $5 compared to the rest of the movies that are out right now. People would have bought that movie and been pissed off because it's one of the worst movies of all time. It just doesn't work. Especially yeah. now, if you look at the way video games have been coming out, video games have been sucking ass. It's like really Russian roulette. You, you buy a game, oh, this is terrible. Oh, this is good. People don't know anymore what to expect when they pick up a game. They get reviews, and reviews are lies. You buy a game, you don't like it. What if you have to pay $80 for a game that you just can't fucking stand? What if you pay $80 for Evolve? Because it costs them so much money to make it, you know? You'd be pissed off, and, and people are just not going to go for that. And I think that developers need to understand that. People are not going to... If you start there, so the price of development is going up, though, so how... You know how do you do it? I mean, you got it. You still well, want games, right? And you're not you willing to pay now. more for games that are now more expensive to make. So what are you gonna do? Well, we have something now that we didn't have back then. We didn't have DLC mm -hmm. back in the PlayStation Two days. We didn't have so that. You're kind okay of stuff with like Mortal Kombat charging money for easier? It's up to the consumers to buy it, and and I think that's better because it's a fluctual expense. It, mm -hmm. it fluctuates. You know, some people if they want it, if people really like a game, they're gonna buy every little thing they can for it. You know, uh, if people don't like a game, I guess it goes on the game's merits. If a game is an amazing game, you're going to buy everything for Destiny because you love that game. Mm -hmm. It cost them so much money to make Destiny. They're making their money back. They made their money back because they released a product that was good for consumers. So they're going to continue to release DLC. They're going to make their money back. If a developer makes a game that's subpar, a lot, of, I'm not going to buy the Evil Within DLC. It's total shit, you mm -hmm. know. And, and that, I guess people can judge it based on how much they like a game. And the people kind of vote with that. People buy DLC and, and little micro transactions for games that they feel are worthy of that. And if well, a developer makes it, it's worthy. I don't, I don't like your argument about comparing it to a movie. I don't think it really works, but I do like your argument. Like, yeah, if, you know, DLC is the way forward. But, you know, a lot of people aren't happy with these microtransactions. Yeah. But you can't please them all. And, and people are spending yeah. their money. You know, people... We, we, we've criticized microtransactions. Robbie was extremely vocal with the uh, Evolve uh, DLC. Don't buy Evolve Day 1 Edition, goddammit. You know, I remember his argument. Mm -hmm. People are passionate about it when it goes too far. But yeah. if a, if a Do you think the Mortal creates... Kombat stuff is too far? I don't really think it is. I no, don't. it just seems pretty desperate to me. It's not too far. Like, these are absolutely things you don't have to buy. You don't have to spend a single cent in that game after you bought it if you want. Like, I really haven't felt the need to buy anything. So I mean, there are people out there who make a shit ton of money and don't know what to do with it, you know? Some people wipe their asses with $5 bills, 20 in some states. So, I mean, <laughs> if they've got money like that and they want to, I don't want to, I'm going to push one damn button and do a battalion. Let them spend it, you know? It's really up to the consumer, and uh, I don't think there's any issue with that. And I think developers need to focus on reasonable ways to create DLC that is engrossing and keeps the gamer entertained. I think that's what they need to do. Games like Destiny, perfect example. Call of Duty has been a perfect example for the last 10 years. All their DLC, people buy it. People enjoy the game. Yeah. Yeah. They make their money back. If a developer makes a game that's terrible... They say, well, it costs us three hundred or a hundred million dollars to make this game, and people don't like it. You're not going to make that money back by releasing DLC because nobody liked the game in general. So release a decent game, yeah. at and least they, something that people can hold on to. Yeah. And I, I don't mean, mind I like your argument here. I gotta I say, I, I think you're right here. I don't mind being half right in your eyes, Brian. It makes <laughs> you feel good to be half right. Yes. All right. What's yeah. next? Wait, right, I want to so, segue into this one. All right, okay. so uh, hopefully this game will make some money back, and uh, I'm sure this game will be very successful. Speaking of successful games that will make their money back, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt has gone gold. The game is done, was, and it's ready for its release on May 19th. That was Boom. smooth as money. Oh, we got to wait till May. That's money. the same day that freaking House of Wolves comes out. Yep, House of Wolves is screwed. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Man. Damn. That sucks. Uh, yeah, bro, that's... Wow. You guys just realized that? Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. 
I, I, I'm pissed off because I'm going to want to play that game day one, and I know I'm going to be playing House of Wolves. Yeah, you are going to be playing so House of Wolves. That game is going to get added to that pile right over there that's got Dragon Damn. Age in it. No! Far Cry 4 in it. No! <laughs> I know it's going to happen. No! Well, I don't know, man. Uh, the Witcher, that to me, that's the future of the RPG, the Western RPG. I'm so excited. CD Projekt Red, they just said, fuck Destiny. Wow. That's terrible. A lot of people who've been playing... Because, to be realistic, lots of Destiny players have been getting burnt out. Some people have it. Oh, yeah. A lot, yeah, look. A lot of them have. And it's going to be a war with your inner self, a war, a war with your soul. Because you're like, okay, CD Projekt Red is releasing this. Ama- I know this game is amazing. They're releasing this today, and then the House of Wolves comes out today, and you walk inside GameStop and split in half, <laughs> and you go in two different directions. I want this, and I want this. Oh, it's going to be terrible. Wow. That's going to be a good week. <laughs> if you could only, yeah. only play one, Robbie, on May 19th, what would you play? Witcher 3, because it's a brand new game and I'm stupid excited about it. Even though I'm really excited to get back into Destiny, I'll probably jump into House of Wolves like a little bit after it comes out. Wow. You guys let us know in the comments below. On May 19th, are you guys going to be playing The Witcher 3 or House of Wolves? Let Witcher us know. 3. That's going to be it's, an event. Like we've already a really played good question. Go with The Witcher 3. Because that's going to be an event. You have to be a part of that. Somebody has to play House of Wolves because I don't want Briar to be alone. He's going he's to walk into Destiny and see a tumbleweed. JDI, <laughs> in the street. comments, he's saying Batman. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, man. Well, that's good to know. The comment section is pretty on board with Witcher. Oh, yes. Okay. Witcher 3, guys. Come on. Yeah. Witcher 3. Witcher 3. You've already played yeah. plenty of Destiny. Witcher 3 is going to be incredible. Witcher 3, cool. hands down. Wow, that's going to be a hell of a time. I'm excited to see what happens there. God, I'm just right, so far behind. I'm so far behind. Oh, <laughs> on to more news that I don't really care about. Journey, Flower. You don't care about this? No, because I already got Flower on PS4. They already redone right. it. Have you played Journey? Yes. No, I haven't played Journey before. You haven't played I'm... Journey? No, I'm really oh. interested to try it, though. So I might just it's, try it. It's an more. amazing game. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with me playing them again. I'm just not super excited because I've already experienced them. I've already beat them, right? Uh, now, they're going to be remastered in a single package for the PlayStation 4. Sorry, Xbox fans. Yeah. These Flower and Flow, I, I played both of those. They were interesting, but I could really care less about them. Journey, Journey, yeah, Journey is one of the coolest games to come out in the last 10 years, as far as I can tell. And uh, you know you tried, that this you? game got missed by a lot of people. Even people who had PS3s missed out on this. So I, yeah, this like game me, is I a did. piece of freaking art. You know, like it, it It's very sad too. It's it's silly good. It's you know, it's so good. So this is good. Usually I don't well, get excited about remasters, but I'm just a ooh. fan of Journey. Like I'm a fan of the people that made it, you know, and I want them to succeed in life and to see this game come <laughs> get remastered for PS4. In life. I'm happy, and I well, I want them to you know also get finance for their next project, you know, because yeah. they blew me away with Journey. I can't wait to see what they're coming out next. I think I'll definitely buy it. I'm definitely I, think, I think I'll play it again. Wow. Now, now for people who haven't played Destiny, I mean Destiny. Sorry, right? You got my Destiny. head all messed up. Destiny. People who haven't played Never Journey. Journey. <laughs> Journey has a very unique multiplayer. Okay, uh, don't, don't ruin component. this one for people. No, I'm not. It has a yeah. very unique multiplayer component, right? And what you're, it's a single-player game. You can't just go in and find a, someone to play with. You can't. It's a single-player experience, but throughout the game, you'll run into other people who are doing similar things. And you, you can communicate with them in very strange ways. And it just feels... It means something more than the typical game. And by the time you get to the end, it's it's a very emotional game. Very, very fun game. Uh, and it almost got Game of the Year. Lots of people gave it Game of the Year. What was that, 2013? 12, 2012. Was it 2012? Yeah. Journey is definitely, out of the three, the best game, followed by, uh, well, I can't really say that. Flower is more of a tech type of demo to me, and Flow is actually pretty fun. So, the Journey's Flower the best one. Flower and Flow were things to do while you're high. Journey yeah, was a stupendous experience. I stopped smoking when I was six, so... Uh, and I'm wondering what they're going to do uh, as far as the price of this. What are you guys, <laughs> what, are, what are you guys thinking they're going to do for the price of this? Because uh, when these games came out, they're relatively inexpensive. I think Flower was nine dollars, yeah. nine ninety nine. Journey is fourteen ninety nine when it came out, and I think Flow was nine ninety nine as well. So with the remaster, if they remaster graphically all these games, they look like real 
PS4 games, what do you guys think for the price? I think they could do anywhere from nine ninety nine to nineteen ninety nine and be pretty solid. Twenty dollars. Wow. Oh wow. Well. Wow. Okay. Well, if that's the case, it's a no brainer there. I was thinking maybe uh, maybe more along the lines of twenty nine ninety nine. With the remastering and I'd be whatnot. pushing it a little bit. I'd still buy it. Mm, okay. But they'd be pushing it. Yeah. Like I'd think sense. about it at thirty dollars. At twenty dollars, yeah. I'd, I'd push the buy button. <laughs> 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 well, I'm excited to see what they do graphically because very seldom do they remaster a game and really remaster it. Most of the time, you just get some texture upgrades. But if they actually go into the game and change, you know, some of the fundamentals of the way the game looks, and you that can game tell looks it's gorgeous on PS3. Oh, really? yeah. yeah, and they're going to be 60 frames per second too, all of them. That's another thing. That's so. just like me. I'm running at 60 frames per second right now. It's awesome. You look like 120 it to me. Great. It's awesome. No, I'm like, I see your wings. See, that? see how fast I'm going. I'm going really fast. Birds on a birds on a wrecking ball. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Robbie, you got some stupid questions for us. I want to hear them. We're getting into this? All right. Yeah, let's so, do it. So uh, I've been working on this, I'd say, for the past three or four days. I've been writing down some really good questions to ask you guys. Hopefully you're all prepared. Take some uh, time to think about these and give the best answers you can. So I have some host-specific questions, and uh, Briar, you're up first. Are you ready? I am ready. I was born ready for this. This is my – this is like what – I was born, my mother said, look, I'm going to tell you something. On April – 19th, 2015, you are going to be asked some questions, and you need to prepare. You need to start now and be ready for that day. And that's Your mom is awesome, now. man. All these, li- all these days later, I am now ready. It's finally <laughs> come. All right. The moment, the, the moment you're waiting for, Robbie. First question. Would you rather have a Modern Warfare remaster collection, so the first three Modern Warfares for PS4 and Xbox One, or a Black Ops collection containing World of War, Black Ops 1 and 2? Modern Warfare. Okay. Next question. You're going to love this. Would you rather spend a few hours every day of your life playing Thief or <laughs> never get to play Destiny ever again? Oh, shit. <laughs> got to think long and hard about this. So you play a couple hours of Thief. You got to love to play That's Destiny. Terrible. If you don't do that, you can never play you can My never mother didn't prepare me for again. this. <laughs> <laughs> you for like thirty something years for this. Come on. I really love Destiny, but I really hate Thief. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Let's play. play. We'll be going to play for a couple hours a day, every single day, hours. or you'll never get to play Destiny oh, ever. That sucks. Again. It looks like I'm, I'm going to come back to Call of Duty, guys. We're going to jump into Advanced Warfare <laughs> Tips and Tricks. There you go. Hot new gameplay. <laughs> There's your damn answer. <laughs> that's, a, that's not a real answer, seriously. Would you I rather think that's a real answer. I don't think you or do. never get to play Destiny again. So I really never hate play Destiny. Robbie. I couldn't do two hours a day. That game sucks. <laughs> Wow, that's insane. So you give up Destiny? Uh, yeah, I guess I'd have to. I mean, two <laughs> hours a day is like... There's days where, you know, I don't even have two hours, like, to, to do play something Destiny. like that. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> so, like, the, like, how much Destiny would I actually get to play? 20 minutes. Because I'm playing Thief, 14 <laughs> hours of Thief each each week, but, but but look at the bright side. Hours Brian. of thief a month. <laughs> but you gotta look at the bright side. You'd be good as hell at thief. Seven hundred <laughs> hours of thief a year. Oh my god. <laughs> to play Destiny. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, right. I'd be I'd be making some speed run videos of thief. <laughs> All right, you ready for the next question now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This one's a little less uh, stressful, I'd say. (laughs) If you could choose, would you live in the real world or in the universe of destiny? You know how dangerous that place is? There are, like, all sorts... Am I a guardian? Like, do I at least get the armor? Do I have a Dinklage, like, floating around? Or am I just some schmo? Am I, like, Briar Rabbit now in the destiny (laughs) universe? (laughs) You get whatever you can find, I guess. I don't know. So I'm just, like, a dude... Yeah, you're just a dude. Just Fuck that, Robbie. You know how <laughs> scared to live. place would be. <laughs> have, you, have you seen how big those guns are? I wouldn't even be able to lift them up. <laughs> the hand 
and it's supposed to weigh 40 pounds. <laughs> They're like, four foot long. Okay. Can you imagine there the are, recoil, Briar? The there recoil are 800 you pound out. armored flying fuckheads running around on Mars. <laughs> You're going really in depth with this. Oh my god. <laughs> The fallen are literally trying to get into the city. Like, what if I'm just like sleeping and all of a sudden I wake up and there's six <laughs> out of three <laughs> clicking at me? <laughs> no, thank you, sir. No, so thank real you. Life? Real life. <laughs> all right. They need to make a new TV show called Briar's Destiny and really put him in that world. <laughs> That'd be fucking oh awesome. my god. <laughs> oh all right, man. Brett, I got a couple questions for you. You ready? My cheeks are hurting. Let me calm down. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm good. All right. What games would you like to see the most remastered on PS4 and Xbox One? So it could either be a collection of games or just a single game. What would you want to see the most? Oh, a remaster of an old game? Yeah, like any any game. Any game or a collection. Anything. What would you want to see I'd the like most? to see the Jumping Flash collection remastered on PlayStation 4. What? I'm sure you don't know what that is, I'm sure. Brian, you remember Jumping Flash, right? Yeah, Jump Flash was great. It was an amazing game, and I keep saying it that they need to find a way to bring that old. It was actually a release title for PlayStation One, and uh, it's a, a rabbit named a Robert. Title? Yeah, it was a launch title. It's it's on the original demo disc. I got two of them in there, and uh, you're this rabbit named Robert, and you're battling this woman named Baron Aloha. Might be a man. Graphics are terrible, but you're a robotic rabbit, rabbit, and you jump around the cities and uh, you destroy enemies and you know you, you come up against this epic boss in the end of the game and it was really really fun and it had some of the best first music first person right it was a 3D platformer first person the first 3D person platformer on PlayStation. but it worked like you could actually do it it was one of the first times I'd seen that work yeah and it, it re- they really revolutionized the 3D world for me uh, and that was before Mario 64 or anything to me it was really awesome the I love to see it suck though yeah, they did. They really did. <laughs> I, but I would love to see that reimagined now and how that world would look and just looking out into the distance with, you know, no pop-up. It would just be amazing. Um, so that would be my one for the PlayStation. Now, for my Xbox, ah, they already remastered uh, Master Chief. Oh, that's that's good enough. You got you got one. I was just looking for one. Okay. Jumping Flash. All I know right, that's you ready for title. the uh, next question? You guys let me know in the comments if you guys remember Jumping Flash. The game was amazing. Okay. All right. Next question. So this one is kind of similar to the uh, thief question that I gave Briar. So once a day, would you rather have to jump in a pool of acid so you could get the opportunity to play The Last of Us or give up playing The Last of Us forever? Like never be able to play it again. Hold Just on. jump in a pool of acid you once like a to day. You'd die every day. You'd, to play no, you'd the survive. Last of you'd survive. You'd be fine. It would hurt like hell, but you'd be fine. But you'd be able to play The Last of Us all you want. Or would you give up playing it forever? How long am I inside the acid, Robbie? Uh, let's say like 10 seconds. What, are, are you talking like maybe a foot of acid and I reach in and grab it and my hand's burnt up? No, like you literally dive bomb into the acid like off of... Nope. Cannonball, come in! Exactly. It'd be a big cannonball. And you know what? I'd be doing that same Call of Duty Tips and Tricks video with Brian. <laughs> Sorry. Look, I'm I gotta not... tell you guys about all the latest Black Ops 3 news <laughs> and rumors. <laughs> You're damn right. You're giving the next team Martin. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I, I, I'm not into the, uh, you know, uh, the sadism. I mean, I just, I don't like pain. And I, I work around acid okay. every day, and it hurts. It's so just you give us the last of us and never be able to play it ever again. It would live on in my mind. Okay. All right. <laughs> this is a pretty simple question, but porn over the last of us. <laughs> Which do you choose? Which porn means more the, to you? The last of us. Good. Okay, that I was just a year old wife. Oh, <laughs> What'd you say, Ryan? Nothing. Nothing. A little tickle in my throat. Let's move on. I got a 24 year old wife. I got my own porn hub in my bed. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, we didn't. No, I was just joking. We didn't need to go that far. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you were open the door, Ryan. You can't blame us this. for walking through it. <laughs> yeah. You tell the damn truth. Uh. All right, now I got a couple questions. Uh, that's all the host specific questions. Now I have a couple questions you guys can answer together. So the first one's gonna be pretty simple and easy to answer. The next one might be a little interesting. So uh, if you could choose a setting from any video game, so any game that's ever been released to live in for the rest of your life, where would it be, and why would you live there? 
I I like Bioshock Infinite. Like that was a cool city. That's the one yeah, that comes to mind that's right amazing. away. That's the, I love that city too. Like just uh, the the majesty of like these floating this floating city, right? And these like blocks that kind of move around. I mean, any answer is going to include a certain amount of danger, right? Because video games. <laughs> So, but like just aesthetically and like how cool the place was, Bioshock Infinite. I can't. What was the name of that city? Do you remember? Columbia. Columbia. Yeah, I think that'd probably be my answer right off the bat. Awesome. What about you, uh, Beastly? Hmm. I would probably pick Mario sixty four. So you'd get uh, killed by some Goombas and some. I would whoop a Goomba's ass. Are you tripping? No, I uh, I would go to that world because it's a beautiful world. Has awesome music. There's pretty blondes running around. Sorry, Kate. And um, well, there's power-ups. There's power-ups, man. I go grab a Kate and I just fly the hell on somewhere. Come on. Throw a fireball. I feel like we're you inside, inside Mario. Man, it ain't fucking with me. Yeah, Mario 64. I jump on a dinosaur, son. You must be tripping. Right. It's the best place yeah, to be. Great answer, you guys. I think both are very, very good answers. Very different, but... Very <laughs> Rouge in the chat said Los Santos. <laughs> <laughs> That yeah, would be right. a good, good one. Too. I like that. <laughs> I mean, people already live there in real life, but, you know. Imagine, like, if, if it was left for dead or something. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys ready for the final question of the day? I am ready, Robbie. So this one is going to be a little crazy. This one might take some thinking. How much money, so any amount of money you can have, how much would it take for you to need a live tarantula the size of your hand? That big. Like one bite, or like, I gotta stuff the whole thing you down? You can go at it any way you want. You, you have to. fork it? It's alive? No, you have to eat him with your hands, and he's gonna be the size of your hand. How much money would it take to make you do is that? It, is it alive? I don't you think it's that much. <laughs> he's I alive. Mean, shit. You throw me, I mean, just to make it interesting, I'd say uh, five grand. Shit. I'm five grand? Go. Yeah, I'd do it for five. What if it had mayonnaise on it? <laughs> I'm not sure if that would make it worse or better. I don't really know them. <laughs> you know, it's something like that. You guys saw me. Me and my, I had my sons eating bugs on my my YouTube channel. You guys check that out. Um, a whole tarantula alive, the size of your hand. Do we get to defang it? Because I got you small hands. Actually, and bite your tongue. <laughs> mine are huge. Now, yeah. uh, if. Do you get to take its fangs out? Because if you bite it and it bites you back, you're going to get all it fucked up. It won't attack you or anything. It's literally, like, imagine it's just alive and it's sitting there. Like, you just eat it. There's no, it's not dangerous or anything. It would just be a live toy oh, yeah, to I'd look at. Oh, yeah, fucking ass up, yeah. Five grand, okay, huh? That's your number. Some Frank's, some Frank's hot sauce. Yeah, I'd do it for, I'd do it for five. Really? Yeah. You sure about that? Hey, man, I eat chocolate-covered mealworms for free, Briar. I'll take 5,000 to eat a damn uh, tarantula. <laughs> Why not? What about you, Briar? You going for fifty? It would they, have to they, be thing, a significant portion of money. Yeah. What did they win on Fear Factor? What was the ultimate prize on Fear Factor? Fifty thousand dollars, right? It was a free, so they had to eat. free set of sneakers and shame. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, those guys were eating testicles and live oh. insects and everything on Fear Factor. And I think the the ultimate prize was fifty thousand dollars. So one bug, yeah, five to ten thousand. You know, to keep it realistic. You know? Okay. Unless you're well, uh, I guess that's gonna do it. Thank you guys. I know a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Hundred thousand. <laughs> I can see. So yeah, studio. that's gonna do it, you guys. Welcome to my new studio. Uh, you and my lovely test subjects sticking through these questions. It was fun. Those were good Thank questions, you. Robbie. That was I great. Thought, they were fun. They were fun to answer. I, I really liked it. Next Thank week, you. I'll do the questions. Oh, and, uh, the week after that, Beastly will have to do them. All right. And then mine's going to be the best questions. I'm going to screw you guys over. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Fire, you better have some good ones next week. Oh, maybe I want to go after Beastly. <laughs> no, no, no. We already catched it in stone. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of the Beastly Thought Show Live. Thank you very much for watching live. We are reading the comments. <laughs> and, uh, oof. <laughs> you guys are pretty stressed <laughs> out still? right now. 
<laughs> it's all about the tarantulas. So thank you guys very much for watching. Beastly, Robbie, I'll see you next week. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Bye, guys.